Hello, I will do a demonstration of using TailFNCS to provision MPLs VPNs. The network is a mix of Juniper devices and Cisco, IOS and XR. So it's a multi-vendor provisioning scenario. I will use the web UI and the CLI of NCS to do the provisioning. Let's start by, by using the CLI. Um, NCS comes with a northbound CLI that can reach the whole network, the multi-vendor devices, including the actual services. And you can choose if you prefer the Cisco style or the Juniper style. Remember, then you get a Cisco style CLI across Juniper Cisco's or vice versa with the Juniper. Here I have the Cisco style CLI. Let's start by provisioning a service. So note well, when we do services in NCS, both in the CLI and the web UI, we have an abstraction that represents the service configuration. So you don't have to deal with the individual devices. So let's just go here, I'm pasting a VPN config into NCS. So this is what the configuration I, I started with here. So I'm creating a VPN forward, its ACE number, a couple of endpoints that refers to the end devices. So this is the service configuration. When you install NCS in the network, the first thing you do to bootstrap is to get the config from the network. So we discover the actual configuration on the current network. We load that into NCS in, in a way that we can interpret it. So when we do the service configuration that I will soon commit to the network here, it's not just a static config file. We always compute the minimum diff. So we will look at the current config on all devices, look at the desired state and compute the minimum diff to go from current state to the desired state. So we can commit it and we can dry run and say out format native. So rather than just blindly commit it, you can always inspect if I would commit this, what are the underlying Juniper and Cisco commands. So at the bottom here, we see the netconf XML going to the Junipers. In the top here, we have the CLI commands that can be committed to the network. Go back to the web UI, and we have this VPN. And of course, you can do the same thing here. You can give a VPN to Volvo as well. Give it the nice number. And then we can drag and drop the end devices. CE0. Let that be the main office. Pick an interface. Give it an IP address. Bandwidth. Take another endpoint. That is a branch office. We need an IP address for that as well. So, the same here as in the CLI, we've just populated the service configuration, we have not yet committed this to the network. So we can do the same, we can dry run it, we can actually dry run it at two layers. So the commit dry run would show you in a vendor independent format what is the changes that we get as output here. So this is the change on CE0, CE4, PE0, CE0, 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 CE0 and PE2. And you can go all the way to the actual device interface, the Cisco CLI, the Juniper XML. Commit. 
So I've talked about the minimum diff we always compute. Um, another thing is the full lifecycle support for services. Creating a service and dropping that to the network is, is fairly straightforward. It's trickier to, to change or decommissioning services. And CS has pre-built in functionality to support the full lifecycle support an arbitrary change in the service and NCS can compute the minimum diff to, to go there. Let's do a very simple thing here. From a service point of view, let's say the AS number was wrong, so it should be the number two there. So just changing the AS number on the service, let's see what NCS calculates from that. These are the, all the changes that will go to the network or the native format. So that, that's a bit of change, just to have the ACE number updated in the network. A, a more tricky change is, let's say, the, the topology changes. Um, here we have CE4 connected to PE2, which is the Juniper. Uh, and uh, imagine we had not just one customer, but thousands of customers connected here and the, the topology changes. So let's modify the topology so that CE4 is connected to PE3 instead. And an interface. So we have the topology updated. And we see now that it's connected over there rather than PE2. And that was Volvo. You, there is a function in NCS to, to reach the desired state for services when underlying things changes. So remember the two perspectives here. When I changed the AS number on the service, that was sort of change driven from, from the service and then we compute a minimum diff to update the network. This case is the other way around. We have a current state in the network changing, which breaks our service config, and we can request the service, look at the current state, make yourself work. So that is called redeploy. So compute a minimum diff from the service and adapt to the current state in the network. What would that look like? Here we see that we, we have a link that is changed in, in topology. So we will clean up in, in PE2 because it, we were disconnected from T, PE2. And we will create a new config on PE3. And, and note well, this is across vendors. So the topology change was from a Juniper to a Cisco. We can also look at the native. So we will render all these changes. Again, the minimum diff, apply to the network, saved. So what I showed here was full lifecycle support, uh, both changing services top down to the network and the other way around, reality changes, and we need to calculate a, a new state. And there's always a minimum diff calculation engine in NCS to do that. I did show it in the CLI, in the web UI. And it has, has a rich range of APIs as well. So all the things I've done here could be done over the REST API, Python APIs. Uh, let's just wrap up this simple demo by a small illustration of the REST. So over REST, you can manipulate the services, look at the services, etc. Um, here I'm just asking the, the REST server of NCS to show me all the layer 3 VPNs that exists currently. And here we get a XML output back. Uh, you could get JSON as well, uh, if you prefer that. Or you might be interested in look at looking at a specific VPN service and all the details about that. That's just continuing with the URL to point to the Volvo VPN, and you would like to have all the details about it, so you say deep. So here you see the data for, for that specific service. And to conclude the demo, let's decommission a service. And of course, you could do it in the CLI, in the web UI, 
let's just continue here in the rest so you can see that you can interface this with self-service portals for example. So here we would delete the Volvo VPN over REST. And of course that cleans up everything in the network. We can verify that logging into the web UI. And we only got four here, so no Volvo VPN. Thank you.